an extraordinary exclusive interview with Ukraine and Arsenal superstar Alexander Zinchenko. It's not very often you get to hear a Premier League star talking like this. Vladimir Putin's brutal war in Zinchenko's home country of Ukraine has wrecked countless lives. But many people with his profile prefer to shy away from talking about such contentious things. He's not one of them. He's chosen to use his platform to rally support for the people suffering in his homeland and to condemn the people responsible for it. He was speaking, of course, in a personal capacity, but he didn't hold back. Alex, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I've wanted to talk to you ever since this war in Ukraine started, and particularly so since you came and joined my club, Arsenal, which I've supported all my life. Because to watch a player like you having to go on a football pitch twice a week with all that's going on back in your home country shows me that you must have incredible mental strength. How difficult has it been for you? Well, um, thanks a lot uh, for this invitation. It's a, it's a really pleasure to talk to you. And um, I tell you honestly, I, I, I'll be honest, I'll try to be honest. Um, it was not easy, you know, to adapt on this. Uh, but unfortunately, unfortunately, all of us, I'm talking about football players and which is playing abroad, um, it's not easy, you know, to be to be far away from the home, and then watching all these scary things which is happening. But um, I remember quite well um, first couple of weeks that I just lost my head. I I, I didn't know where I am. I, I didn't know where I'm driving to, to 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 the training ground or where. I didn't know honestly. I was like in the space. I couldn't believe that that this has happened, and. Uh, but in the end, you know, uh, there is two options. You just keep being in the space or you have to do your best to help, to help your country, to help Ukrainian people um, as much as you can. You have to represent your country in the best way you could. So that, 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 this is the conversation was between all of us, broad players, which is playing for the national team. And uh, obviously, that was my uh, my decision to to carry on, to, to 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 do my best, and to help as much as I can. Because I know that I'm well, will be much much more helpful to my country and to the people from here rather than being there. But I really want to be there. When did you know that Russia had invaded your country? Well, it was a deep night. I was sleeping because I had session in the morning, and my wife uh, suddenly woke me up. And she said, it started. I said, what started? She was crying, you know, like full in tears. And I said, what started? What's wrong? And she just showed me the, the videos, the pictures of, of this invasion. So that's how it all started. And that's how I... Obviously, you know, if you look at the bit back, um, the, the, the... Look, let me, let me, let me be clear. Some some of the people still think, or they still talk that this is a conflict between two countries. But this is not conflict. This is a proper war, right? And this war started in 2014, mm. when I was like 17 or something, right? And I didn't, I couldn't even understand what was what's going on. And uh, they took Crimea and Donbass without any resistance. And you were playing at Shakhtar Donetsk yeah. at the time, and you couldn't play, right? Well, uh, all Shakhtar moved to the other city, but uh, I had another story, football story, which we can speak later a bit, but I'm talking about just the, the general invasion. And uh, they took Crimea and Donbass without any resistance in 2014, and no one, no one uh, could understand what's obviously happened. Um, and then, obviously, in 2022, um, since the, the main invasion across the whole Ukraine, it's scary, to be honest, it's scary. I still cannot understand for what, to achieve what. I mean, it was terrifying to watch it, and I'm not Ukrainian. I can't even imagine what it must have been like for you and your family to watch your country being illegally invaded and in such a brutal, barbaric manner, where very quickly... Russian forces were committing atrocities, war crimes. You know, I went to Bucha when I went to, to Ukraine and heard some of the stories there of the appalling massacre there. To actually be Ukrainian and watch these scenes must have been an appalling thing. 
Imagine the place where you was born and raised. You know every single stone there. You know everything around yourself. You know the people around yourself. You have some some friends, I don't know, job. And then one day, someone from the other countries with the guns coming there, destroying everything around, raping your, I don't know, your woman, kids, killing men, and then living, stealing everything around, everything what you achieved, what you, I don't know, what you bought before, for no reason. You reckon in 2022 this is possible? I don't, I don't know, but it is. And, you know, using this kind of opportunities even to talk to you, uh, I would like to, to, to send another message to the rest of the world. I know some people got fatigued. I know this. Um, but why it's so important to keep going, to keep pushing, to, to stick, to, to, be, to be together, to stick together and to win this uh, terrorist invasion, it's so important because today Ukraine is a shield for all the Europe. And you never know, today is Ukraine, but tomorrow it could be I your completely country. agree. It could be your country. It could be any country. Exactly. What are your thoughts about Vladimir Putin? I don't want to even say his name. I don't want to even say his name or to talk about him. It's incredible, honestly. Just yesterday I, I watched, um, because I'm following all the news and I watched a short clip of his video when he was talking to someone uh, sitting on the table. I don't know even these people who was there around. It's like young men and, and, and girls. And he was talking about Kachovka Dam, which they destroyed one week ago. And he was saying that Obviously, Ukraine did it. Well, 100,000 of people lost their houses. Some of them didn't survive. There, there was one zoo, 300 animals died. And everyone is, was talking about Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian counterattack. I'm talking about army. And then he was saying, in the video, he was saying, Ukraine did it because... They were planning to do counterattack, and then this dam makes them so slow, slower. And it, like you're just trying to put it in your head. Well, you are uh, Ukrainian army. You want to do counterattack, and you destroying dam to makes your counterattack slower. Makes no sense. And he's just saying this. I, I was like watching. No, no, I need to watch it again. Maybe I didn't hear properly. So he's lying to, to himself. He did. I, I don't know. I, I know that there is a, a proper propaganda. I know because I had experience to playing there, but I never followed the news or whatever. But honestly, like if I had some circle when I was playing there, now this circle became to zero because I don't understand people. Well, I was going to ask you, you went and played in the Russian Premier League for... One and a half season. Yeah, and you did that because of what was happening in the Donbass and your family moved to Russia. And you're Russian-speaking, of course. You must have made lots of friends in Russia. Are any of these people still friends of yours, or have you had to...? Not a lot, to be honest, not a lot. Um, well, I know that I had this experience in my life, right? Um, but... And some of the people from Ukraine, they don't, they don't like it, obviously. And uh, to be honest, at the moment, me too, right? But, but um, I'm a human being, and I understand one thing, that I would like to say, uh, again, thanks to FC Ufa for everything what they have done. The Russian team that you Yeah, played. where I played, yeah. But that's it. We've seen some Ukrainian uh, athletes, sports people, now refusing to shake hands with either Russian or Belarusian uh, athletes. How do you feel about that? If you had to come up against a team that had a Russian player, would you shake their hand? No chance. No chance. Because I would never accept uh, their reaction. Honestly. I have to be honest. Um, do you think it's cowardly, the, the lack of reaction? I th I'm totally agree with, with this reaction. If, 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 it's not even it's impossible. It's not. There's no point to even explain it. Um, the, the the things 
look, you can say, well, but they didn't do anything against uh, us or something. Yes, they did. They did. How and what? They didn't react. Look, they have followers behind them. Millions of followers in social media or wherever. They have a lot of chances to, to speak out to the people which is following them. And if you have, let's say, 10 million followers in Instagram and you post some, I don't know, one picture like, stop it. Just, you know, black form, stop it. Some people from these 10 million is going to follow you. They're going to spray this as well to someone else. Mm -hmm. And it will work in the end. But if no one is going to speak out because they're scared, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't, don't ever call us brothers or whatever, like they did it in the past. Never again. That's my... That's my uh... Wimbledon Tennis, for example, has just said they will allow Russian and Belarusian players to play this year, having banned them before. Do you agree with that decision? No chance. You think they should just no be bar chance. barred from I don't agree. Sport? I don't agree. Well, that, I'm one of the... I have one of the Ukrainians which is... Uh, which is which don't like to see them in, in any, on the highest level in any sport. So they should just be... Exactly. And, and do you think both countries, Russia and Belarus? For sure, 100%. They shouldn't be allowed to compete? Shouldn't be allowed. Why? Because how many bombs and rockets have been sending from Belarus? How many? Listen, I'm not... Uh, listen, I'm not political. I didn't understand anything about it. I don't understand, and I would never understand it, because this is not my area. But... This is not political. You, they are it's talking, life and death. This is war. And they're talking about don't put politics in sport. This is not politics. This is war. Guys, you don't do anything to be, I'm not saying on our side, on the justice side. 